afternoon. I'm still reporting on the economy. We will resume our analysis of the British Parliament's money creation debate held last November 2014. Why? Because nothing like it has happened in my lifetime. According to Mr. Meacher, who we will hear from shortly, this has not been brought to light in the British Parliament for 170 years. It is an extraordinary, though sparsely attended debate from which every legislator in every nation today could benefit. There is really nothing I can add to this. Labor Party Michael Meacher explains the core of the problem beautifully. Order. The question is that this House has considered money creation and society. Mr. Michael Meacher. Um, I, too, very strongly uh, congratulate the Honourable Member for Wickham uh, on securing this debate, uh, which I think uh, everyone recognises uh, is vitally important and which has not been debated uh, in this House, I believe, uh, for 170 years since the Robert Peel's uh, Bank Charter Act of 1844. And I remember the Honourable Member drawing my attention to that when we were both last speaking in a similar debate. Uh, and that uh, Act prohibited the private banks from printing uh, paper money. And in the light of the uh, financial crash of 2008-9 and the colossal expansion of money supply that underpinned it, uh, no less than an increase of 22-fold in the 30 neoliberal years between 1980 and 2010, I think the issue today is whether that prohibition uh, should be extended now to include electronic money. Uh, it is unfortunate, as um, the Honourable Gentleman referred to, uh, that it is so little understood by the public uh, that money uh, is created uh, every time by the banks that they make loans. Uh, in effect, they have a virtual monopoly, uh, something like 97% uh, over domestic credit creation, and it is the banks, therefore, the banks, which determine how money is allocated across the economy. Uh, and that has led to the vast majority of money being channelled into property markets and into the financial sector. According to Bank of England figures for the decade uh, to 2007, 31% of additional money created by bank lending went towards mortgage lending, 20% towards commercial property and 32% to the financial sector, including mergers and acquisitions and trading and financial markets. Those are really extraordinary figures. Uh, it means that only, and this is a crucial point, it means that only 8% went to businesses outside the financial sector, with a further 8% uh, funding uh, credit cards and personal loans. It is only this last six, the, the two eight percent, lending to businesses and consumer credit, that has a real impact on GDP and economic growth. Only that 16 percent. The conclusion, I think, is unavoidable. We cannot continue with a system where so little of the money created by banks is used for the purposes of economic growth and value creation, and instead, and I'm picking up the point that the Honourable Gentleman made a moment ago, the overwhelming majority of the money created uh, has the effect of inflating property prices and therefore pushing up the cost of living. Now, in a nutshell, the banks have too much power and they have greatly abused it. Firstly, they have been granted enormous privileges since they can create wealth simply by writing an accounting entry on a register and they decide uh, who uses that wealth and for what purpose. And they have used their power of credit creation to hugely favour property and consumption lending over business investment because the returns are higher and more secure and thus the banks maximise their own interests but not the national interest. I'm still reporting on the economy. Good day. <laughs>